I want to take some time to look at the New Brunswick Green Party, because in New Brunswick, they're a pretty significant political factor. They're currently projecting it somewhere in the department of 15% of the popular vote, and there's a very real possibility of them holding the balance of power in the legislature. Now, there's really no other third party presenting a credible threat to win a seat, and at present, 338's projecting a pretty decent chance for a minority government. That means the Green Party could hold significant sway, and I think it's important to see what they have to offer. Now, I want to caution this by saying, there is no credible chance of the Green Party forming government. Not going to happen. They do have a nearly full slate of candidates, but there's just no path for it to happen. So let's look at them as potential members of the legislature instead, because they do have at least one extraordinarily safe seat. It's their leader, David Kuhn, in Fredericton. And there are two other seats of which they're fairly likely to hold at least one. And that's enough to hold the balance of power in a very close legislature. It's happened before. So first up, I want to talk about the leader, David Kuhn, because he is largely the architect of the success of the Green Party in New Brunswick. He's been the leader of the party since 2012 and an MLA since 2014. He studied ecology at McGill and got a science diploma from Vanier College. He worked with Greenpeace and for a long time he served as the policy director of the Conservation Council of New Brunswick. He worked with the CCMB for 28 years. He's been dedicated to environmental causes his whole life. And he's been a thorn in the side of Irving Oil his entire life publicly criticizing for oil leaks as far back as the 80s. Now, he's also been a part of the anti-nuclear movement, and he's advocated against the expansion of oil development and extraction. But he's not necessarily against resource usage, as he wants it controlled at community levels. He's also part of the Harvest Share Co-op and co-founded the New Brunswick Community Land Trust. He is a tireless advocate, but in recent years, he's become very focused on glyphosate risks due to agricultural runoffs, and he's really brought that issue to the forefront. So he was working in policy, and in 2012, he was getting increasingly involved in politics. Through his work with the Conservation Council, he's worked with the Federal Green Party, and he was part of the group that organized Provincial Greens. He was their first full-time leader. And he won the first leadership race confidently. After that, he ran for the Fredericton South seat in the 2014 provincial election. And he got a lot of support from former NDP members. And he somehow managed to win a very narrow vote split with 31% of the vote. And since then, he's been a surprisingly effective third party politician. He's been able to build the Green Party significantly. And he's brought them to the point of having three seats in the House with Kevin Arsenault and Megan Mitten. They were the first party to release a platform, the most effective third party fundraising group in the province. And they've guided the Greens to actual relevance. They've managed to get a few policies across the line. And for a third party to do, that's rare. Now, some of the proposals in the platform, very reasonable. Some, a little wacky. Like, they're claiming that they're somehow going to magically remove politics from infrastructure projects. As politicians. Best of luck with that. Sure, nobody's ever thought of that before. They also want to add tons of administrative layers. Like, they want to create many more smaller school divisions and community health boards. It's sort of a community-level libertarianism where they want to decentralize a lot of government functions and move them to community or local level. They have very broad, sweeping environmental commitments, healthcare commitments, and education commitments, and a lot of big, bold ideas. But the big problem with the Green Plan is the finances. I read through their platform thinking, this is interesting stuff. Not necessarily bad ideas, expansions of fundings and supports, expansion of housing policy, other stuff. But the whole time I'm reading, all I could think was, how are they going to pay for this? Because typically when you read a party's platform, you're going to find a costing. They're going to tell you how much they're planning on the new expenses to cost and how they're planning to pay for it. Or if they're planning to run up a deficit. So the party didn't put the costing in the platform. So you have to dig through the documents they submitted to Elections New Brunswick. And when you do, you find out that their proposals add up to about $4 billion in new spending with 147 total commitments. And when David Kuhn was asked about that, he just said, quote, I'm not worried about adding billions to the debt because we will not add billions to the debt. We will have a debt management plan no matter what. People don't need to worry. That will be managed. But we are in a crisis when it comes to health care. And we are, if needed, willing to go into deficit in the short term to save New Brunswickers. When he was asked how long the deficits would last, he replied that it was impossible to say. He'd let you know after the election. And poof, there goes your credibility. Looks so promising. David Kuhn's an interesting guy and he has some interesting ideas. But this is not a party that is set up in any way to govern. And while I think they have some interesting individual politicians who'll grab a couple of seats and be a valuable voice in the legislature, there are some questionable policies here. But there are also some promising ones, like recognizing a nation-to-nation -nation relationship with indigenous people, the Climate Change Risk Reduction Fund, and raising all social assistance rates by a blanket 20% and indexing them to inflation. They're interesting, but until they have a serious plan to pay for them, it's hard to take them tremendously seriously. So it looks like David Kuhn will remain an important voice in the legislature, but it's hard to imagine them making significant gains beyond that.